You know, I like to peruse the internet and find values and deals and things that might pertain to my audience in some way. And I was recently looking through Amazon for um, some gifts and stuff for the holidays, obviously. And I came across this. This is the Asus Tough F15 gaming laptop. Not to be confused with the Strike Eagle. Well, Strike Eagle 2, because apparently we brought the old one back but upgraded it, so it's the second one. This is a 15.6 inch, 144 hertz, IPS hype, full HD gaming laptop with a discrete graphics card. Cool story, bro. So what makes this pertain to you? It's 650 bucks. NZXT's Build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Want to build your own PC but still have the NZXT peace of mind warranty? Then the new BLD Build It Yourself kit has what you want. Buy it and build it yourself and NZXT has you covered. To get started configuring or building your next gaming PC, visit the build link in the description below. So I have not opened this box yet. I have not looked inside. The seal is still uh, intact because I, I want to go through the entire experience with you guys here. So bear with me for the unboxing. We'll talk about the specs. Then I'll get some games loaded on it, make sure Windows is updated and all the drivers and stuff are up to date. We'll throw a couple games on there and we'll see how this thing actually performs. Um, it's kind of funny though, at this price point, like Asus really has to make it compelling and they have to use buzzwords and stuff. So when I go through the listing here, there's gonna be some funny things in here. Now there are 741 reviews on Amazon. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. It does also, it does also an affiliate that does help the channel. So if you guys end up buying it or anything else while you're there, um, it does assist with videos like this with the channel because I am out my own money to do this video. Um, but 741 reviews and four and a half star average. Now Amazon reviews are something you usually take with a grain of salt because a lot of companies will buy reviews. Specifically the, the, the like cheap China knockoff type ads, never trust any of those reviews. This being Asus, and being sold directly from the ASUS store, you could probably take it as a little bit more of these being validated customer reviews. However, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Now, in terms of specs, it is a tough series gaming laptop. So, you know the tough, it's kind of funny, tough for a while there was an upper brand, like an upper tier for ASUS. And then over time, tough kind of fell down when ROG started growing and then Strix and all that became like their high-end ROG stuff. And then Tough is not technically fallen under the Republic of Gamers name. It is just the gaming line of anything Asus at that point, just regular Asus. Remember, Republic of Gamers is a separate company technically within Asus. So it's kind of weird the way all that works. Anyway, moving on. It is a 15.6 inch, 144 Hertz, full HD IPS type display. I'm not entirely sure what IPS type display means. I guess I'll have to look that up. I'm assuming that means it's like, near IPS, I think it's like near beer, only for your eyes or something like that. It's a Core i5-10300H processor. Nothing super exciting to write home about. It does have a discrete graphics card, a GTX 1650. Again, the 1650 discrete for a laptop is not the same as the 1650 discrete for your desktop. It is gonna be a lower spec part than that even. However, we're only aiming for 1080p gaming here. So 1080p medium settings is about what I would be looking for in this laptop. For the price, it's the kind of thing I can overlook. Eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, it does not say the speed, so we'll have to investigate that. And it comes with a 512 gigabyte PCIe SSD. It does not say if it's an NVMe or not. It's probably just an M.2 SSD. Now these are parts that can be upgraded theoretically. I wanna check, I wanna make sure, is the RAM soldered in? I highly doubt it, it's probably SODIMM DDR4. It's probably a standard NVMe SS or uh, M.2 slot <clears throat> with an expansion slot, hopefully, that allows us to then be able to update the storage if we want to. It does have Wi-Fi 6 and it comes with Windows 11 pre-installed. Keyboard, optimized for gaming. It has RGB, 20 million key presses, and overstroke technology. No, overstroke is what you get when you buy a 40 series graphics card and you see the price. In terms of like, it's, battery. It's a 90 watt hour battery, which I'm kind of happy with. Laptops already for any Windows based laptop, especially a gaming laptop, battery life should be like a secondary or even a third reason you would buy it. Expect to have to keep it plugged in if you're if you're gaming at all. It needs to be plugged in, otherwise a graphics card will not go to full speed, so you're not gonna get your full FPS. However, it is advertising up to 14.7 hours of playback. That's enough of that. Let's go ahead and get this sucker unboxed. You know, I will give Asus this. They're always so like good with their packaging. I mean, it's, this, this seems so basic, but whatever. Okay, it's actually a little bit weightier than I thought it would be. It's not super heavy, but um, the box itself was pretty light. But once you take it out, you can tell that it's actually a fairly decent 
weight laptop. So what you get right here, this is just your quick start guide on how to, oh, this is your one year complimentary accidental damage protection. So Asus is giving you one year of complimentary accidental damage protection, which includes liquid spills, electrical surges, and drops. Apple, why don't you take uh, maybe a little bit of a <laughs> example from this lead? Okay, yeah, it comes with the Linus protection. That's awesome. Um, here is our, but it's a little baby one. It's a little baby. It's 150 watts. It's listed right there. And it's an actual Asus brick. It's not like one of those like super knockoff ones that they just source from China and say, here's one that will work with our laptop. And then we got a Mickey Mouse plug for our charger right here. So that's it, pretty basic, doesn't come with a whole lot. This right here is actually an adapter to be able to use a two and a half inch SSD. So what you see here is this terminates into your SATA plug and your SATA power for like a two and a half inch SSD. And then it comes to the ribbon cable, which you would need to be able to attach it to the motherboard. So it does come with an, app, an adapter. I think given the prices right now of NVMe drives, I would just go with NVMe and not this. Uh, but again, it's kind of nice that they included that. Ooh, look at that. Fake brushed aluminum, but it's plastic on the top. I'll point that out. It's plastic up here, plastic down here. It looks nice. I've got to do the hinge test. Can you open the lid without the whole thing flipping back? No, you cannot. So you got to two hand open it. Actually, it's pretty stiff. Look at that. You can put it in just about any position and it will hold. How far back does it go? About 45 degrees back. And yeah, that's a gap right there. And I'm blocking my microphone. Nice big rubber feet on the bottom. So we've got right here, right here, right here, right here, and one in the center, which is nice. Um, in terms of intake on the bottom, there's some vents there, not a lot. Um, you can see you have your exhaust on the back right here. It is a 10300F. It's not a very high power part. Obviously the, map, the, the laptop version of a 10300 is much more energy efficient. The 1650 laptop um, is also, or graphics card is also not gonna be very uh, high heat part. So uh, fingerprints, obviously finger oils and stuff will show up on this. I mean, I just washed my hands not that long ago and you can see finger oils and stuff do show up as well any matte black thing. Faux textured finish here or faux brushed finish on the inside. We've got a trackpad with two physical buttons. It's not the trackpad itself where the corner pushes down as a button. I prefer physical buttons like this versus the corner crap. Our WASD is very gamer here with a clear button. And we got, actually have a 10, a 10 key pad over here, which is not full size 10 key, but it, as a 10 key user myself, I like having that. And then we've got what appears to be some potentially speakers right here. There's a vent right there. I'm not sure if those are speakers. We'll have to take a listen. Power button up here. And then in terms of connectivity, there is absolutely nothing on the back whatsoever. I'll point that out. It means everything is on the sides. So on this side, you get your power plug, you get your full size RJ45 ethernet jack, which is nice. HDMI, two USB. It is Thunderbolt 4, by the way. So if you wanna hook a discrete graphics card, eGPU up to this, you absolutely could. And then we do have our combo jack right there for our headphone mic. And on the opposite side, we just have one USB. So not the highest amount of connectivity. Oh, and then a Kensington lock, which again, that's just for people putting it on display in stores for the most part. Since I'm going through the Windows setup process, two things stuck out to me right away. And it, one of them Phil immediately recognized. The speakers in this are actually way better than we expected it to be. Yeah, that's very clear. And hold on, where are they coming from? So those vents are not speakers. They are downfire speakers. Yeah, they're coming out of right here. These little, these little vents underneath. The other thing is the trackpad. The trackpad is actually not bad. Having physical buttons, there's no doubt when I'm clicking the left button, right, or the right button. And I think one of the first things that I said is it actually feels better than the trackpad that comes on the Corsair Voyager which costs like four times as much money as this laptop. This background is like the worst I've ever seen. Fortunately, that's an easy change. Also too, there's a ton of bloat. I didn't touch anything, what did it change? Whatever. Um, there's a ton of bloatware. The fans are fairly loud. It's just sitting here idle and the fans are like speeding up, I think. Well, actually, are, are updates going right now? Updates might be going right now, let's see. Surprisingly more noisy than I expected it to be, given the fact that it's such a low end part. Yeah, there, there's all these updates going right now. 
So I just, before we do the updates, which I said I needed to do, um, this backdrop is awful. It also comes with McAfee pre-installed, so you're gonna have to get rid of that. It also comes with my Asus, and it comes with Armory Crate. And uh, actually, if we go ahead and see all the apps that are pre-installed here. Uh, McAfee Live Safe, McAfee Personal Sur Sec uh, Security, Web Advisor by McAfee. So yeah, we're gonna go through here, and you can hear the fans have now chilled out because I think the installs have stopped. They're waiting for me now to say, go ahead and install them. Yeah, first time, I feel like I need to do a video. Like, the first steps every laptop, new laptop owner should do or something. Because like we did that video that was like, how to get your tower up and running after you build it. I think we need to do one now that's like, how to unlaptop your laptop. It's really interesting too, um, as I'm updating drivers and whatnot. So it's a four core, eight thread CPU. It's an i5, 10300H as it showed, but it goes, well over four gigs, it's 4.4 gigs while installing the driver right now. It, it's kind of crazy because of the fact that the CPU also does have an iGPU in it, which means this would actually be a very decent mobile editing rig. But the fact that you have four cores, eight threads, it could use some more VRAM or regular RAM, like system RAM, but it also has the iGPU, which means QuickSync would be available to you in anything that uses QuickSync, quick sync, including OBS, uh, Premiere, Photoshop, all the stuff that does integrate with QuickSync, it's available to you. Plus you have the, the discrete GPU as well. So this would actually make a, a very powerful, inexpensive mobile productivity rig, if you will. Normally when we, when we, if you review an expensive laptop, you really start to have to like, what are all the use cases to make the price worth it? But in this one here, it's like the, the use cases really out and the speakers are very loud, as we'll show you in a sec. The use cases really do outweigh the price, which makes it an extraordinary, I get it, value. Speaking of pricing, um, one thing I wanna point out right now is 650 bucks. I tried shopping for other laptops in that price point, and all, all I was finding for that price was like Zen books and expensive Chromebooks and like HP pavilions and stuff that were like business oriented only. I don't know if this is just left, leftover inventory from previous gen. I mean, it's 10th gen, right? It's three gens old at this point. It's a 1650 in there, which is not a, a high-end graphics card by any means. In fact, it's the lowest end GTX currently considered newish. But for the price, I mean, yeah, you could, for 650 bucks, we you could definitely build a more powerful laptop or a desktop than this, but you're not gonna go carrying it around with you. Corsair brings gaming to the next level with the Xenion 45 inch flexible OLED Xenion Flex display. With up to 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.03 millisecond gray to gray response time, motion blur canceling, anti-reflective coating, burn-in protection, and customizable bend based on user's preference, the Xenion Flex from Corsair allows gamers to truly tailor their display to their liking. Click the link below for more details. Civilization is a vulnerable thing. A whim of circumstance. The speakers are very loud and very time, clear. The smallest flap of a butterfly's wings. It's pretty impressive. Iran, Laptop speakers typically suck. These right. are awesome. They are better than even laptops Those that cost four times as much as this thing. Stand a what? Anyway, you do have a function row here, so you can hold down function and just turn the volume up and down or mute it entirely. Uh, same thing with brightness of the screen. You can turn it up and down through there. Uh, you can also switch your different fan modes and performance mode, silent. I'm leaving it in turbo, I want all the performance. Our GPU is currently at 68C right now. This is a rendered menu, by the way. So we're getting 76 FPS, 69C. Um, this is our, our, GP, our CPU frequency, so we're only 4.2 gigs, and this is our GPU frequency right there. So you guys have an idea of what it is you're looking at. Let's see what the settings are. It is uh, someone? Uh, video right now. Color grading's on normal. I want full screen. Okay, we're at 1920 by 1080. We have no sort of upscaling happening here right now. So if I go to advanced settings. We're on direct, uh, DirectX 12, asynchronous compute. Uh, interesting that asynchronous compute is off. I'll just leave it off by default. Texture quality and everything's on high. Motion blur is on low. Everything else is on low. So if I'm gonna go to a custom quality here of like, let's just say medium quality. How's that? I'm just gonna restart real quick. I think a medium quality is fair for a 1080p, 1650. 
but it also might be a little bit removed from reality for a while. It's been a while since I've used a desktop 1650 and I've never used a laptop one. So this will be interesting to see. This is where asynchronous commute might, commute? Asynchronous compute might actually come in. And I said full screen, why did it go back to a window? I think it always launches in a window. It didn't launch in a window last time. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> why did it do that? Full screen. There window. it goes. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so the, the fans are loud, as you should expect with any gaming laptop, whether inexpensive or expensive, it's gonna be loud. Um, yeah, it's okay, we have really loud speakers to combat it. <laughs> can't hear the fans anymore. <laughs> can't hear the fans if you can't hear anything. Episode two performance, sure. I mean, at this point, we're gonna have to use the technologies to help bring up uh, the performance. Not to mention we are at 15.6 inches, so that should help with, yeah, it still looks pretty sharp. All right, well now we're up to 50 FPS. Oof. Yeah, it's not bad, it's really not. Okay, but see, now that I'm down here in an area that hasn't loaded yet, it's started chugging along. Well, I guess the one way to really test how well it handles a fight is to go pick one. No, I didn't mean to jump! Ah! Like, I'm, I feel like I can actually focus on the game right now. Ah! Not bad. I mean, the temperatures are not great. You know, if you were to put a cooling pad under this, or just give yourself a little bit of a, a little bit more airflow to it, it would absolutely help bring the temps down. With FSR on performance, it looked nice and sharp. I Because the screen is so small, 15.6 inches, I didn't notice any smudging or nastiness. And there was a lot of fast movements in there. Um, that is not an easy game to play. Like anyone that has played Dying Light knows it can absolutely bring your system to its knees if it's not, you know, high enough spec. Now we're gonna try Cyberpunk. Presets medium. Uh, it did FSR 2.1 at a half res. Oh, that's image sharpening, sorry. So it's an auto there. Um, it's not like it's turn on DLSS. I don't think the 1650 has tensor cores at all. It's been a while since we looked at this, but I don't think they had DLSS available to it at all. See? So, okay, this one's got a little bit of smudginess. Do you have a moment to talk about your vehicle's extended warranty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The FPS is not great, but Cyberpunk is also not easy to run, that's for sure. And you're in like the downtown, ah! you see the whole city. It's playable! Sound quality. So, I'm gonna go to YouTube here real quick. It's really not bad at all. Actually, I, I say, when you say something's not bad, it's almost like you're saying it could be better. Like, I can't complain about the way these speakers sound given the price of the whole thing. A little buzz happening over here at full volume, but you bring it down to like, honestly, where you're gonna be listening to it, which is like maybe 45. It's so clean, it's crisp. And the mic is actually right up here above me. So, it's probably a little farther away even than I am, than my ears are. Uh, a couple other things to talk about here before we tear it open. Um, yes, that's a built-in speaker. Yes, that's built-in webcam. They're absolutely garbage. In fact, here's a sample of how the recording looks and sounds, and you can see why you should definitely just get yourself a decent headset and uh, a webcam to carry on in your bag if you're gonna be doing video conferencing on this, because it is awful. And obviously if the fans are blaring because you're trying to play games while being on that work call, then that's all they're gonna hear is the fan anyway. So don't use any of the built-in conferencing crap with this computer. Um, the last thing I wanna do before we open it up is I wanna look at Cinebench R23 and I wanna see how it compares. You guys can download Cinebench R23 yourself and compare it to your computer, especially if you're on a laptop and uh, you wanna see how yours compares to this $650 laptop. If you're on like a really high end, like a 12900H or whatever, then be, be nice. Your CPU alone costs more than this whole laptop. Here we go, four cores and eight threads of i5 10300H Fury. If I had to make a guess, it's probably gonna land right around, I'm gonna say 7800. I'm guessing 7800. I have never used one of these CPUs. This is just a guess based on what's on the chart and what I've benchmarked in the past. 4344, I was way off. 
It's a 35 watt part, 45 watts. Last but not least, we need to go ahead and tear this bad boy open. I wanna see build quality, I wanna see what the cooling solution is, and I wanna see exactly what our upgradeability is regarding memory, which we already know, two, two so dim slots, and uh, more importantly, storage. All right, one thing I wanna point out is I was wiping down finger oils with my microfiber, and you can see some of these fibers now sticking out of the points of this uh, sticker, this mirror sticker logo that's kind of recessed down for the Tough logo. Um, it does, like, it did lift up the edge slightly, so now I would have to take, like, tweezers to get those fibers out of there. So I just want to point that out. To get into it though, they are just Phillips head screwdrivers. The difference thing that you need to keep in mind though, is that the links are somewhat all different. <laughs> so just somehow keep track of what went where. When I do this, I just use one of my J's Two Cents gaming mats, which are available by looking right underneath this video. Another thing you can do is you can also take an iFixit lid to sort of denote where they went. Let's work our way around, pop off of those little tabs. This is where it's also important to kind of have the right tool for the job. And having these little spreader tools and stuff as part of our iFixit kits are always nice. And there it is. You can see you have some metal heat reflective material here designed to try and keep it from getting too hot on your lap. You can see the vents that we have here, 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 here. Just kind of randomized almost above certain components, I assume. As you can see, we have a giant copper heat pipe versus a smaller copper heat pipe right there. So I'm, I'm bet you anything, the one that has two pipes, it's probably the CPU. Oh, we do have expandable memory available to us. This is an eight gigabyte single stick. We're running in single channel memory right now. So one of the biggest upgrades you could do to this chassis or this whole setup right now is to add another stick of matched RAM. So they made an interesting cost saving move here by going with a single eight gig stick, but giving you the ability to upgrade it. I don't even know, I guess I could have looked at it when it was on to see what the speed is, but it has a little heat spreader on here. So I have no idea what brand this RAM is and I forgot when it was on to take a look at the speeds. Um, we'll just kind of annotate it on the screen right here what the speeds are. I'll turn it back on after I'm done filming and see what it is. We do have an M.2 expansion slot right here and it comes with the screw pre-installed. So this is a screw to hold it down. So we would easily be able to add more storage to this. Now this is our other SSD right here. Again, can't tell you exactly what it is, because it's like that super ODM, it doesn't look like a cheap one. I only say that because it's a black PCB and I kind of want to peel this back. Oh, and then as you can see, here's our wireless um, SATA right here. So our PCI, so plastic tools, be gentle. So you can get the battery out and replace it if you want to. It's obviously a 3S. That's a cell, that's a cell, that's a cell. You can see the way they're separated right there. Um, so it is completely removable. In fact, let's stop the edit right here. Uh, we just noticed something actually during the edit that the battery actually says 48 watt hours on it. Uh, however, all the advertisement for this laptop shows 90 watt hour batteries. So now all of the complaints about the battery not lasting as long as advertised seems to make sense considering this laptop is actually false advertising and only giving you a little bit over half of the actual advertised watt hours. Asus, you got some explaining to do. All right, back to the video. All right, so the Asus Tough Gaming F15 laptop. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where the one piece of information that has the most bearing on a review, especially customer reception and stuff, is gonna be the price. I think you are gonna be pretty hell pressed to find, or hard pressed, to find a better deal at $649. As you saw, it was able to play Dying Light and it was able to play Cyberpunk. Not the highest frame rates, but we also didn't spend a lot of time tuning it. We were able to just jump in there and start playing. Expandability with memory. It does have an available memory slot, which is awesome because initially I thought it was gonna be two four gig sticks, which means it would suck if you upgrade it because you have to toss a stick that you already paid for, but no, now you can keep what you've already paid for and add to it. And it has an available NVMe SSD slot, M.2 NVMe SSD slot, as well as an available SATA slot. Webcam sucks. Most webcams inside of laptops do suck. The built-in microphone also sucks. However, speakers don't suck, which is normally not something I'm used to saying. The speakers are absolutely awesome in this thing. This is a big room right here. This is like a 45 foot by 20 foot room. It's big and it fills the room with sound. 
The keyboard, it agrees. The keyboard is also pretty good. It's not extra mushy. It is a, a membrane keyboard, but it's not extra mushy. The keys have plenty of, of return so that you get very um, you know, active feedback when as you're typing. You don't feel like keys are lagging to come back up if you're a fast typer. They are flat capped keys, which is nice. I, I don't personally care for domed or concaved. I like a flat key. But more importantly, there's enough spacing between the keys where you can easily index your hands and type accurately. So many laptops are just hell bent on getting as much space as they can by squishing all the keys together, making it just not a standard size keyboard. This feels like typing on a standard size keyboard minus the numpad. The numpad is smaller than a standard 10 key. The trackpad also doesn't suck. I'm telling you right now, I've reviewed $3,000 plus laptops that the trackpad is absolutely god awful. I don't care if it's made of glass and, you know, it was blessed by the king of Serbia or whatever. If it sucks, it sucks. It doesn't matter what it's made out of. This has physical buttons for left click, right click, which are pretty solid feedback. Over time, we'll determine how well they continue to return. They tend to wear out fairly quickly on trackpads. Um, but the trackpad itself tracks motion very nicely. The build quality, it's pretty solid. It's all plastic. It's nothing to write home about, but that helps also keeps the manufacturing cost down, which keeps the price down. A screen, IPS type, the colors didn't look terrible. We have no dead pixels on mine. Refresh rate is 144 hertz. So if you're playing things like CSGO or Rocket League or other MOBA type games or, you know, that are high refresh rate dependent and they're not hard to push, you're gonna get 144 hertz on this. And the fact that it is, you know, full HD, I think at 15.6 inches is perfect. I'm having a hard time finding things I don't like about it. Some might say it's a little bit too gamer boy looking. It's got that red stripe. If I had to really complain about anything, which is kind of ironic because the tough color is actually more of like a goldish yellow. So the red is kind of weird because it, if it's really gonna be tough, it should be like a yellow color. It shouldn't be any color personally, but it's not so over the top gamery that you turn it on and it's got blinking down under glow and glowing logos and stuff. The only RGB on this is the keyboard and you can easily turn that off. Man, I'm telling you right now, if you're looking for a laptop, not sponsored by the way, remember I spent my own money on this. If you're looking for a laptop that is capable, portable, lightweight, and comes with a, you know, it's Asus. No company's perfect, but Asus is a company that'd be a lot more willing to put my money in than some rando Shenzhen China brand out there that I may probably have no way to get a hold of. And it, I forgot, it comes with that one year accidental damage of water damage, drop damage, and just, I guess, any kind of damage, honestly. One year coverage on that thrown in. If you think there's a better way you could spend 650 bucks for a laptop, I dare you to comment down below. And be real. Don't be like, I got get this Chromebook for $300. I just bought my daughter a $170 Chromebook. You know what? She could play Roblox on that. If you think that's a better deal than this, maybe you should be playing Roblox.